Hey, it's Gareth Flood here, and today we're going to talk about business plans and the business plan. We're going to talk about what a business plan is, why you need one, and how you go about filling it out. And if you stick around till the end, I will show you how to get a free and completed template example of a fully done business plan that you can download and start using immediately for your own business plan. So stick around till the end to get that. Okay, let's go. So firstly, the what. What is a business plan? Obviously, it's in the title. It's a plan for what your business is going to be. Now, in some of my other videos, I've talked a lot about business strategy, and from that comes your marketing strategy. But a business plan sits one step before that. It's initially and originally came from the idea of you're starting a business, you have an idea for a business, or maybe you've started doing something and you need to formalize it. So you need to put what the business is and everything of how it's going to be successful. A number of things need to be in place for any business to be successful and you need to be able to document this in one place and that's where the business plan comes in. And why? It's because historically it's been you need capital, you need to attract something to make the business work. So you either need funding, so in the old days you would take, or even today, you take it to a bank or venture capital, or even friends or family, anyone who you need money to get going. So you say, lend me the money to start my business or to grow my business. They will say, well, how do I know it's going to be successful? What am I, what am I gonna get for my return? What security do I have? So that was where, why most businesses have a business plan. And once you're up and running, it then turns into an annual business planning process, but it doesn't need to be as detailed as in the beginning. In the beginning, what you need in your business plan, you do need some things that aren't talked about normally. So it's like, what's the capital required? What's the setup? If things go wrong, what's the exit? Uh, all of these types of things. So that is why you need a business plan. It's to form your team. So another example is you could need to attract partners and if uh, you need to attract the right team to say, well, I, to make this business successful, I need you know, a product manager, a marketing manager, I definitely need a finance person, etc. And it could also be that you could be an expert in your area, say it's like I'm great at marketing, but if I wanted to build the product was a software, piece of software, I need a software developer, coder, I need somebody to handle the technical side of the business. So I could also be looking to attract the right partner for my business, for my business idea, and I get them excited also through the business plan. Because you can't just go to somebody and say, hey, just join my business. They're gonna ask all of these questions. So this is how you answer all of those questions to get the right capital, to get up and running, to launch it, to show you have a plan, and to attract the right team. That is why you have a business plan. And now I'll talk about the how of what's inside it, how you fill it out. Before we go any further, just a shout out to the subscriber of this channel, JD, who specifically requested in this comments, in the comments section, numerous times, can I please do a video on the business plan? So this is for you, JD, and to my other subscribers. Thank you very much. If you haven't liked and subscribed to the channel, please do so and put what you would like to see in the future in the comments. I read all of them, I respond, and if enough people want another topic, I will be more than happy to make a video on that too. So let's get underway. So the next layer of detail going down of what is inside a business plan will be the executive summary will have these six topics within it. Obviously there's the concept of what is the business and this you must be able to explain quite simply and quickly to somebody. It's this, it adds this value to people and this is how big I think the market is but this is basically what it is and what it does. And don't forget, all businesses can basically be categorized into one of three areas. It's either health, wealth, or relationships. So how does your product or service make people healthier? 
make them feel better about themselves, make them live longer, make them sleep better, whatever. How does it make them wealthier? Makes them money, saves them money, etc., etc. Relationships, beauty products, how does it make them feel? How does it make them have better relationships with their children, with their spouse, with their business people, with their corporate, with their HR department, whoever they're having problems with? How does it make their relationships in life better? And everything can be put into one of these. So that's a good way to already categorize. So the concept is uh, my product or service makes people wealthier by doing this in this time frame. Something as simple as this. I help people to get X results by doing Y or by my product which does Y. Something as simple as that. What is the concept of what is the value of your business idea? And then below that, you have, well, how are you going to make that concept come alive? You need a company. So this is looking to say, how, do you, how are you going to set the company up? Is it going to be a limited liability company? Is it going to be a PLC, a limited liability partnership? Basically the company structure. How are you going to set up the company structure and organize it in the, in the early days? The next question is the management team. Who is running this company? And management team is very important. I was always told by one of my early leaders in business, if you go to a bank manager and ask them for money or resources or whatever, he's going to ask you three things. The first thing is, what are you doing? What do you want it for? What's the concept? The second thing is, who's in your management team? If I'm giving you money, how do I know that you people are qualified, that you're not gonna waste my money, I'm gonna get return on my money. Remember, first rule of investing, don't lose money. Second rule of investing, don't forget rule number one. So who's on your management team? And if it's just you, how are you going to plug the gaps that you need around, say for example, finance or technical or supply and operations or something like this? So who's on the management team? And the third thing the bank manager is going to ask you is what is your track record? So that will also be under here. You'll have profiles of people in your management team and people want to see that you have some experience in what you are doing. So if you are a fitness instructor and you've been in the fitness game for 10 plus years, you've done it all, you've been qualified, personal trainer, certified, lots of things, and you've come up with a, a fitness idea, some kind of new stretchy band that makes cheekbones wonderful, great, you have experience in that industry and with those products. If you go there and you say, um, I was a computer coder at IBM and now I'm launching a, a fitness gym, they're going to say, okay, well, you don't have any experience of those products or service or that industry, which could be okay, but how are you going to plug those gaps with your management team or your circle of people that you can pull in to help you? So are you competent? Do you have competence in who's gonna run the company to deliver the concept? The next part, market potential. So you see this on Shark Tank and Dragon's Den. They spend a lot of time, they firstly understand what is it, then they qualify, are you qualified? Am I talking to somebody who's good or are you a dreamy idiot? And once that's qualified, then you want, then they get into, oh, how big is this market? How big could this be? So any market is the size of, you think of a universe, and do you have one little planet within there? Or are you an entire galaxy? However you, you wanna use this metaphor, you know the world is this big, is your niche a dot? Or is it a big circle? Or maybe it's a, it's a square within this? But you basically want to say, if this is all the people in the world, how many can you serve with this product? And in your country and in your market, how big is your target market? So if you're looking to sell you know, men's running sneakers, you can work out and you can get some industry data, how many people are running, how many people wear uh, shoes for leisure wear. You can work out how many men could be interested in wearing men's running sneakers. And that would be the size of your market. How big could it be? And then you can get into, um, it, once you're good at your market, you could look to go to other markets, you could look to export, go into other countries, etc., etc. So, but you need to know how big could this thing be? And then you've answered those questions, tick, 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 tick. You get into funding. Again, this is a big reason why the business plan exists. You're looking for funding and resources 
to get up and running or to scale. If maybe you're a you know, solopreneur or a one person band, or you've got you and your spouse, your partner and your couple of friends helping you, and you think, okay, we need to move, we need to get out of working in the kitchen, we need to go get an office, and I need 10 people, I need 10 sales reps to scale the business. So you say, that was, in that example, what I need the funding for. I need to move into a premises to start manufacturing, and I need to hire 10 sales reps, and I expect each sales rep to generate 100,000 a year, which will give me X amount of profit, etc., etc. And you can see how that answers all the questions. And the last thing you generally have in a business plan is the exit strategy. And this is more for people if they are funding you. So they want to know at what point are you going to pay them back if that's what you want, or are you going to give them some shares or just pay them out if it's a pure interest on a loan type of deal, or if things are going badly, you don't want to throw good money after bad. You could say, we tried it, it failed, didn't work, no problem, but we will call it quits at this point. So say when we say we run at um, negative cash flow for six months and it gets to 50 grand and we're piling up at negative two grand per month, that will be the time to fold the business and throw in the towel. So you can have an exit strategy for paying people out if you don't want them anymore, or just to call it quits and say, well, we, we won't lose or throw any more money into it. That's what you have there. So that is a summary of what you're trying to get across in the business plan. Hey, if you like this content, then I invite you to head over to my website at stepstogrowth.com. The link is also in the description below, where you can pick up a lot of free resources, as well as I have case study videos and extra materials. And you can also find out about the Marketing Plan Accelerator program if you want to get your marketing plan done, high quality marketing plan in six weeks or less. So head over to my website, stepsgrowth.com. Check it out. Thank you. So now that you have an overview of what's in the business plan, let's go to the final layer of detail or the next layer of detail down, which is really the, the meat and the detail of the plan, which you do need to get to for your business plan to be taken seriously. So again, I will give you all of these topics. I will give them to you in the business plan and you don't have to complete them all to the same level of depth that I did. If something is not relevant for your product or service or the market you're in, you know, either you can, you can delete parts or you can just make it very short. You can answer it in one or two lines. Do not get freaked out that I have to make a 20 page Word document. You don't. You just have to get these things across in a nice tight format. You could have this in five pages if it's very, very clear. But for the rest of the business plan, you have to work through these topics and I'll dive in to the actual example and show them to you just now. But you do have to work through each of these topics. So essentially you want to explain for someone to read and understand what is the product or service or product and associated services that you're going to form your business out of. An industry analysis, which what industry are you talking about? Are you in you know, medical, fitness, this type of thing? The market analysis, so the specific market that this exists in, which could be a subset of the industry that you're in. You know, if, again, if you're in fitness, that's fitness is an industry, but the market could be uh, women, just men and women, or it could be, for example, uh, quite specific. Your market could be uh, women wanting to get fit again and lose weight after having a child. That That is a specific market. So that could be your market analysis. That's a, a niche as an example. Competition, obviously, all markets have competition. And like I've said before, competition's good. It makes you better, but you can't avoid it anyway. So you have to be aware of who else is competing in that space and how strong are they? If there's not much competition or there are kind of two or three people at about the same level and two of them aren't very good, you're in a good space. If you're going to you know, wade in and suddenly compete against uh, a 600 pound gorilla who can probably squash you fairly easily, uh, something to be aware of. You know, If I'm going to uh, write some code to launch a spreadsheet company to take on Microsoft, you know, that's gonna be, you gotta be aware of the competition. Next, marketing and sales. 
So how are you going to market it? What's the value proposition? How are you going to make people aware of the product? And how are you going to sell it? Which could be uh, your distribution system. Are you going to sell it from your website uh, or with stores, Amazon, eBay, Shopify? Are you going to sell it if it's offline? Could be online and offline. Physical stores, again, if it's a, in the fitness example, if it's a piece of gym equipment, some stretchy new rubber band, but it has to be done. How do you get it into the hands of people in the gyms? Do you need sales reps? Do you need to incentivize gym owners? Do you need to just get in with a chain of gyms? These, how are you going to sell it? And is that going to be sales reps doing this or just an offer online? You need to figure out the sales method and who will do it. Operations, obviously, how is it going to operate, particularly if, if it's a physical product and you need inventory? How are you going to manufacture or import? How are you going to store it? How are you going to ship it? How are you going to do figure out logistics? This is your operations. Health and safety, if you have people working for you on a premises, how is it all fire safety and health and safety checked? All of these types of things. And again, financing. So earlier you asked, you asked for money. This is saying, how are you going to finance it? What are you going to do with that money? So you, you'll have some graphs of here's the money I expect to spend in the first three years on things like marketing and sales and operations. And I expect obviously revenue to start at zero and climb slowly over time. And then my net result is obviously I will have uh, be negative for a while. A lot of businesses historically, when you, you go to business school, they say most businesses don't make a profit in the first two years. So you'd expect negative to be uh, profit to be negative as you spend on all of these things and you don't have that many sales coming in. And then you would expect that graph to curve up and cross the positive line at some point, which back to the earlier point, if you've borrowed money, they will want to know that and they can say, okay, I don't expect to return all my money back for this period of time, but we expect to be positive within six months or one year or three years, whatever it is, your financing, how are you going to spend the money and what you expect the results of that to be. And if you have all of this lined up to the level required that makes sense for your product or service in your market, then you will have your business plan. So now I'm going to dive into the specific example and the template that you can download for free. And I'll just give you some context of what the example is. It's a fully written, completed business plan. And the idea of the product or service is something called a workshop pack. So the concept was uh, this I came up with myself. It was just an exercise I did in my 20s when I was getting used to writing business plans. And the concept was when I first started working for very large corporates and I was in my early 20s and we had this global strategy workshop of 20 countries and markets around the world, heads of these markets, all flying into London. And I was put in charge as part of the strategy team of organizing what we called you know, a workshop. Of all of these people coming to a hotel and we're going to workshop for three days what to do with this business. So while I was working on the strategy, I also had this, I was tasked with running this whole workshop. And bear in mind, this sort of cost 20 to 50,000 pounds for all of these people to fly in business class to get in a Hilton or a Marriott hotel dinners every night. And then how do you structure a three day event, which I had never done in my life before. And I had no idea how to do it. And I got through it and I thought, wow, imagine if you're starting out and suddenly you have to run a big event, event management or a big workshop, which there's a lot of this in the, particularly in the corporate world, but in all businesses, you get people into a room to you know, figure things out. Uh, if there was like a, a checklist that I could do to just tell me what to do, tell me how to run this thing step by step. So that's exactly what I made. And this was a prototype for it. So the idea was it's a workshop pack that tells you step by step how to run a great workshop, you know, how to plan it, how to run it on the day, post it, follow up actions, everything to do, including agenda templates, health and safety checklists, icebreakers, energizers, things around equipment, catering, meeting room, invitation types, venue, 
confirming attendance, participants, structuring the workshop, other things to, to consider. It went on and on and on. So you just get this thing and tick things off and you would have a great workshop. So the business plan was this. How do I make a physical product like this that I then want to sell into places that it's required, right? So we're now going to dive in and I'll show you step by step of a detailed business plan of this example. So let's dive in there. So firstly, to get access to the template and the worked example that we're going to go through and that you can download, you go to school.com, that's school with a K. So S-K-O-O-L.com forward slash steps dash two dash growth. You can log in if you already have an account or join up. The whole system is completely free. And this takes you to my school, which is called the Marketing Profit Accelerator. So you log in, again, all free. Here's the community. You go to classroom and here it is. Business plan, you can access again for free. So you click open and you're able to download the template from there. So simply go to school.com forward slash steps dash two dash growth, go to the classroom and boom, you can download the business plan and rewatch this video in there as well. So let's look at the template. So this is it. This one went to 17 pages, but like I said, it only needs to go to the level of detail required for product and service industry urine. If it's five to 10 pages and it's very clear, perfect. So basically cover page, here's the table of contents. This is all hyperlinked. So if you go control with a PC uh, and then click on this, it'll take you to that area in the plan and I'll keep this navigation pane open. So basically the executive summary, this is what I talked through in the video. What is the business concept? What is the company, the management team, the market potential? the required funding and its use and the exit strategy. So the executive summary should be able to get the entire plan across to somebody in five minutes. If you only have five to 10 minutes with people, you're not gonna go through the whole plan. You just go through the executive summary. And then you get into the detail, which people will also want. They're not just going to say, oh, I like your concept in a paragraph. They're going to see, uh, want to see the detail you know, product shots, uh, real structure, thoughts on your organization, etc., etc. So here's the main body. You get into the company description. What is the business concept? Let's go through it. So company description, boom, the main body. So it takes you through the business concept. It's a concept created by this company, Adventure. It takes you through the background. What is the concept? I'm not going to read through it all, but it's a good example of where does this concept come from? Where does it sit? And also how the, the product is already split out into, in this case, different levels. You can have level one foundation, level two working, level three mastery, level four, even higher. Summary of activity to date. So this isn't just stuff on paper. People have been doing things already, particularly if your business is already launched or you've already done some research and you've done a prototype, whatever. Competencies of the people involved. So who are the main people? managing it, running it, their qualifications, experience, put that here. And then you get into the product. So here I describe what the workshop pack is. It's to help facilitate various types of meetings. It's offered in four levels. It's a combination of how-to items, templates, checklists, and games for workshop. I talk about the physical product and packaging, the product content, the contents detail, actually what the menu of it is, so this is really detailed. This is what the product is. Okay, and if you have a service, just do the same for that. Target market. So this is, you are now here. We're still talking about the product. If you look at the navigation on the left here. So we talked about the company. We're now talking about the product, the product or the service. The target market, who will it focus on? The benefits to those people. What's the benefits? Again, what I said before, health, wealth, relationships. What is the benefit? Why would they buy it? The only reason people buy things is because they get value out of it. So what value is it giving to your target customer or consumers? Your target channels and customers, if that's your channel partners to sell on the product or a channel is just somewhere people buy things. You know, a supermarket 
is a channel. A high street store or a shop where you go and buy your milk is a channel. So if you're going to, or in the fitness example, gyms is a channel. If you're going to sell in gyms, that's your target channel. I've done a whole video on channels and route to market, uh, route to market. So go and watch that if you want to find out more about channels and also the differences between customers and consumers. So in this one, we said, okay, the internet, we would set up our own shop way back then. This was many years ago. You can see we were going to sell it on eBay as a shop and office catalogs. Most of these have already moved on to new platforms. So where are you going to sell yours? You know, your own thing, Amazon, Shopify, uh, via Instagram, via Facebook groups, whatever. Benefits to the customers. Again, a customer versus a consumer. Customer is somebody who buys it from you but sells it on to the consumer who actually uses it. So what's the benefit to a customer if they're going to sell things on like a, they're like a distributor or a channel partner? How are you different to current offerings in the market? So again, if you have a fitness example, if you have a fitness band, why is yours different to other bands? Maybe it's more durable. Maybe you can get 10x stronger. Maybe it's made of some material that's never been done before that does something amazing. Whatever it is, how are you different? And then the last thing is your keys to success for the product. Is it a differentiated offering? In this example, it was a differentiated offering. It was ready for immediate use, plug and play, just pick it up and go. You didn't have to go to additional training or knowledge gain. It's reusable. Once you've got it, you don't have to pay to use it again. It's yours for life and it's low cost to produce. Therefore, actually relatively low cost also to buy. Those are the keys to success for this particular product. So whatever your key to success are for your product or service, list those here. So let's look at the industry analysis for the workshop pack. These you're gonna cover barriers to entry, which means you know, how hard is it to actually get in there? Some things it's very easy to get into. Fitness, for example, you could make your stretchy band and go and start selling it to gyms tomorrow. You can go talk to gym owners. If they like it, they'll stick it in their gyms, okay? And some barriers to entry are hard. Again, the example I used earlier, if I want to create a spreadsheet software and go and compete against Microsoft and Google, those are high barriers to entry because everybody is already using Microsoft and Google. They're already very embedded. They have low costs, might have high costs to develop it and then to try and sell it to customers who have low initiative to change, high barriers to entry. In this example, it was low cost to design and produce, and there wasn't an exact competitor product for what I was offering. In this example, like, you know, there wasn't, the, what I was selling wasn't already on the shelf, so it was new. Supply and distribution, how are you going to supply and distribute it? Technological factors, if that's important. Economic influences, some products and services are bought and their demand, so you're talking about elastic versus inelastic demand. How susceptible is your product or service to economic influences? So for example, we're suddenly, if we hit a recession, a lot of companies immediately pull back on marketing and advertising spend. So if you're setting up an advertising agency, you need to know that you know when times are good, boom, 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 you want to make hay while the sun shines, but you know that uh, in economic hard times when we hit recession, it's going to go down. Conversely, if you're setting up a learning to drive business, that is recession proof because people are always turning 16, 18, and they always need to learn how to drive. Parents don't want to do it. They want to outsource it to you. So that is a recession proof business because people at the moment still want to spend money to get their own car to get freedom. Uh, regulatory issues, if this doesn't impact you, fine. In many countries, you know, if, you, if, you, if it's a manufactured product and you're just pulling it in from China, for example, you need to be sure that there's nothing that's not illegal in you know, waste or plastics or lead or whatever in the stuff you buy. Uh, other regulatory issues are if you wanna set up uh, a legal consulting business, in some industries and professions, it's quite strictly controlled. Who can do that? So the legal profession, the medical profession, you, know, you can't just rock up and say, uh, yes, I'm gonna start selling 
my wonderful potion that's an elixir of life. Yeah, we learned the hard way through those. So if there's regulatory issues, fine. Um, if there's not, just take this out. So then you get into the market analysis. Definition of the overall market. How big is the overall market you compete in? In this example, all companies and individuals involved in organizing and running workshops. Covers all industries as well as government departments and not-for-profit because so many of them spend probably way too much time doing workshops and brainstorming and sessions. So it was a big market. Market size and growth. Good. Is it growing, declining? The trends. The segments. Can you break it down further? So again, I talked fitness. You could be like hardcore fitness, general fitness influences, uh, fitness for health, fitness to lose weight, fitness to get jacked and look rip, ripped. Lots of types of fitness. What segment are you going for? And then your targeted segments. Which segment out of those are you going to go for? The consumer characteristics and needs. So in this example, the bulk of the consumers are expected to be office workers who uh, need to run a workshop. But the ultimate cost will be paid by the company. So the, the characteristics and needs was they, the trigger is they know they need to run a workshop, but they don't know how to do it. And you have the solution. Purchasing decision process. Yeah, how do people decide, yes, I need what you have? Next section is competition. Again, going to a level that's required for you. When we did this example, we couldn't find an existing product that did this. So we looked at, we still have to look at similar competition or people who could move into your space pretty quickly. So we said the competition was meeting facilitator companies, uh, courses which include change management, books on the topic. There's lots of books on facilitation, group facilitation, etc., etc. Or well, we weren't looking to make a book. We were looking to make a product. Uh, and then we did find a couple of products, not quite the same, but still, you need to list out all the competitors and how you are different or better than them. And then give a summary versus your competitors. Are you competitive or it's going to be tough, but you can do it. Next section, we described marketing and sales. So the product, again, what's the product offered? How is it going to be distributed? How is it going to be priced? How are you going to promote it? Make people aware, do some promotions. And this could be, um, in this example, okay, look, the product will be fully branded, consistent look and feel across everything, website, communication, leaflets, etc. The logo will be created, trademarked, and then a separate communication and promotion plan will be developed for each of the direct and indirect sales channels. But if your business is simple as, you know, you're doing a lawn mowing service, your promotion could be, I'm doing leaflet drops in my neighborhood. I'm doing my neighborhood and the neighborhood next to me. My promotion is print some flyers, leaflet drops in every house, done. Salesforce, do you need a Salesforce? How much, what will they be doing? Next section, operations. Now, if it's more of a service or an online thing you're doing, doesn't have to be as detailed this, but if it's a physical product, again, you need to look at product development, development costs, risks, manufacturing, who's manufacturing it, is it you, is it other people, you're importing it? What's the production processes? Do you need equipment? Do you need quality assurance? Do you need administration for the site and the manufacturing? The risks around manufacturing? The key suppliers? If again, you're ordering it from somewhere else or you're ordering the components that you manufacture, are you getting it from, you know, if 50% if, if of what you make comes from one supplier and that supplier sells or retires or uh, blows up, what's your plan? You can't have, you need to know who your key suppliers are because if a key supplier goes down and you can't make your product, then you're dead in the water. Your product and service delivery and customer service and support. So again, if you're starting out, this doesn't have to be detailed. It could be an email, an email and a number that you man or someone in your team uh, mans or responds to. And um, it could be, it could literally be that. If your business gets bigger, then you said, yes, we'll have a customer service center, respond to all the calls, register tickets, answer the tickets, and then at some point uh, outsource that to the Philippines or whatever. Capitalization and structure. 
what's the legal structure of the company and what's your exit strategy in this example we said if the company is not making if it's making negative two grand a month in the company bank account at a certain point the venture would be wound up and then we had financial projections like i said units sold the years the revenue the margin especially if you are borrowing money people want to see this when will i get a return when will you become profitable but even if you don't need it for that and it's still your own business you still have to do a forecast of uh, how big do i want this to get and do i want it to subsidize my existing lifestyle i want um, or i want to build a big company uh, but you need projections for the coming years and this then becomes part of annual business planning you'll do this anyway what's the annual business plan for the next three years and you'll have some history behind it um, and then you can get into some simple spreadsheet stuff right where is it being sold how many units what's the revenue from that because you have an average cost what's your total costs therefore what's your net margin and there's lots of free spreadsheets that will do this for you online you can find these easily and finally the financing is it your money or you're asking for money or it's a mixture your money some family money bank money whatever how are you financing this thing and then development milestones if you're developing a, developing a product as part of the plan when will the prototype be done when will it be tested when will you do some initial manufacturing or some testing with customers whatever and finally risks and contingencies which you don't have to do this section but it's good to at least prioritize hey these are things that are big risks and these are things we're aware of we'll keep an eye on them um, and just review weekly monthly quarterly uh, whatever so summary and conclusions in this example the product appears to fill a genuine need and be attractive to the market because we tested it with people the concept and products appear to provide significant potential there is no unacceptable risks to the concept seen at this stage if anything the greatest risk is that nothing happens due to other resource commitments from the directors if the obstacles of operating as a virtual team can be overcome the upside relative to the effort and money invested appears attractive summary of the key factors of success the key factors of the business plan outlined within this proposal are our target market captures all segments of employees who run meetings and workshops so it's a big attractive cash rich target market competition is minimal also very attractive management team very qualified and continued growth of the market so we had a cheap product in a big target market with minimal competition and we had competent qualified people to go after it that is a summary of the key success factors and then appendices anything else that's required maybe specific to your industry your market your country or any other detail you want to put in here and the other way because this one went to 17 pages the other way to do it is just put what you absolutely need to in the first five to ten pages and then put a lot of this stuff in the appendices to if people ask it's there um, but it's not the main plan if you want to make it shorter more concise more condensed that's the way to do it just put a lot more of the stuff into the appendices and that is it so basically once you download this you can work through this go through each of these topics you know and then just delete the stuff that's there read through it so the business concept pull out anything that's useful here use it recycle it or otherwise delete it and write your own draft for your version of the business plan what is your business concept what are you doing and just work through the plan step by step what's your business concept fill that out some of your activities to date fill that out competencies delete this fill yours out product product or service delete this fill yours out content just keep working through it target market end customers delete this fill yours out what's the benefit to them delete this fill yours out so read the example pull out what's useful from that and then fill out your own version and if you do that you will have filled out step by step this entire business plan which then the executive summary if you go right back to the beginning of what i was talking about these six things tell you 
everything you know. Then recycle and be very clear within the executive summary what it is you're talking about. The business concept, the company, the management team, the market potential, required funding, exit strategy. With those six things, you can talk to anybody about your business and your business plan. So once again, to get this, simply go to school.com, S-K-O-O-L.com forward slash steps dash two dash growth. Log in, sign in, go to classroom and you can go, you'll see it there. It's called business plan. It's got dollar signs on it. Click open. You can watch this video and you can download this template for free. Get underway, finish your business plan, start sharing it around, get some feedback and start building your business.